Hello and welcome. Pretty excited. I'm doing a zero level Greyhawk campaign. Just started it uh, last, well, two nights ago now, I guess. Uh, we went through the uh, Greyhawk Adventures um, book at the back there, the appendix. There's a zero level character section. Um, use some of those rules. Use some rules from the uh, treasure hunt module. And also kind of uh, came up with some of our own, or kind of mix and matched, I guess, and came up with our own, uh, uh, what we're actually going to do. And one thing we decided to do was the 3D6 ability scores in order. Um, instead of doing that, uh, the first, uh, the uh, zero level out of the Greyhawk book has you create some, some points and spend those points. But I thought we would do this, do them out in order, and then when they're all said and done, they're going to get to roll a couple more dice, and then apply those extra points where they want, kind of spend them out, um, to, kind of, to kind of finish and flesh out whatever character concept that they've got going. Experience points at negative 500, so they'll actually reach first level at, at uh, level zero, and they earned like 65 experience last night. Uh, uh, basically, they, they found a treasure chest and got it opened uh they defeated the uh one guard who was who was there um so they did manage to between the whole party they each got 65 experience each uh they started out with no money no equipment they had to find scavenge everything uh, they started out actually because using kind of that treasure hunt uh um, concept anyway we started them out just by shipwrecking them uh, with nothing uh, they collected up some boards collected up some various little this and that's and basically that one uh, that one uh, pirate that they got the some armor and they got some clothes and they got some other little things from him but for the most part they're uh, they're definitely the you know clinging to every little item that they find. I think, oh, we have one wine skin between us. We can put water in that, you know, things things like that. So it's going to be good. So it started out kind of fun. Uh, for races, I decided they had to meet their min-max. Um, so if they did, their ability score didn't roll well enough, they weren't going to get a race. So we have an elf, a couple half-elves, I think. Um, so a few uh, non-humans managed, uh, managed to get in there. So that was kind, kind of cool. One thing I did do is I went and I created a profession table, um, about 20 different professions that I thought would be maybe relevant. I mean, a couple of them were kind of silly, um, which they happened to roll on two of them, one of them being a uh, server and one of them being a butler. So apparently they were uh, on their way to work together or something when they got uh, taken by the pirates. But one of them got to be a ferryman. So when they found like the nautical charts and stuff, Actually gave him a little bit more information than otherwise I would have. Uh, if I if he hadn't gotten the ferryman, I would have just said, you find a map, looks like maybe the ocean. You're not really sure what it is. Uh, but because he had that ferryman, he'd be a little bit familiar. Kind of, you, you know it's the ocean. You kind of know what ocean it is. You know, you, you know, recognize a couple of the little landmarks. You can make out a few of the key, of the uh, map key at uh, at the very minimum. So... And they're going to be able to use that profession as they kind of go on there looking for that first level, at least, um, to kind of give them sp you know, some help with specific tasks. Kind of like a uh, secondary uh, skill, almost. But um, things that they would have already learned. Like the, the w one of them rolled up the profession of the stable hand, for example. So should they come across a horse... It's going to be easier for him to, you know, maybe get that horse and it would be somebody else. Um, languages uh, decided they have the potential to, to learn them, but um, they don't know them yet. Um, they, they would only know languages that make sense. Like the elf, for example, would know elf and common. They wouldn't know goblin uh, or, some, or something like that, unless they had a really good story for it. And um, so, yeah. Hit points, we decided on a 1d4 plus 2. Uh, I know, like, the kind of debate back and forth there. You know, if you become a magic user, you might end up with a little bit extra hit points. We are going to use the treasure hunts uh, leveling to level 1 there. If you're a fighter, you're, you're going to get to re-roll and then use the higher. So either what you had, had originally or 
hopefully you'll end up maybe even with some more hit points. Um, and then luck, which didn't come up in the first uh, game, but um, you're going to get a D100 once a day. So if they're trying some mobility score, uh, for example, when they when the uh, one player tried to pick the chest lock, he actually I I kind of gave him a twenty percent chance that he'd be able to do it, and he rolled a five, so he would just absolutely yep you were successful not a problem. Otherwise, I was going to introduce this luck thing and say okay well we're going to see if Lady Luck's going to shine down on you and now and then you can try to roll a d100 to add to your add to your score but it worked out that uh it didn't need to so it all worked out pretty well i think um as far as would i change up anything here not really so far um i think it's uh been kind of it was really kind of fun just kind of rolling that up and we got it rolled up and we were into the game in like half an hour um and I could say we are following the first edition rules. Um, but uh, once again, in the, in the interest of kind of streamlining things, uh, we are following the um, the Osric uh, rule set. And however, if there's a rule in here that we're not sure of or we don't like, then we will definitely reference back to our actual first edition player's handbook. And that would be what would be uh, we would consider to be our gold standard here. Um, so if there's any rule out there that we don't like in this osteric, or we don't think it's correct, then we would of course reference back to here, and this would be our gold standard. But just for simplicity, just for quick reference and reading, this thing is really really good. Um, heavily recommended. I actually just kind of came across it on Lulu and lulu.com and it's actually it's uh it's uh it's these rules it's very very plain language um they take out all of the extra stuff and just kind of like here's the actual what you need it's kind of almost like a really n nice big dungeon master screen you could almost think of it that way but it really spells out things in nice, simple, clean language. Of course, you don't get all the extra goodness that you get out of the actual original. Um, all the extra information, all the extra um, art and stuff like that. But you do get a lot of that goodness. So, so we are actually using the Osteric as the kind of the go-to. Like I said... It, the our our first edition player's handbook and dungeon master's guide and so forth is still our our gold standard should there be any conflict in our rules or things like that so yeah it's been it's a pretty exciting um and i think i'm going to plan to maybe post some updates of the adventure as we go like i said it's kind of a kind of an open sandbox uh loosely based the very first uh the very first uh, adventure we loosely, loosely based on the treasure hunt, but as time goes on, we'll, we're, we're going to see what happens. I don't have any any uh, intention of totally following that treasure hunt module, or any other module for that matter. I do have an idea that we're going to end up at the Ghost Tower of Inverness, but that's about the only... Um, about the only ID I do have, uh, which of course they're going to be levels five to seven to end up here. So, but that's going to be our end. Our end goal is is the Ghost Tower of, of Inverness. But, but yeah, um, thanks for watching. I hope you this is of some use or interest to you. I do think I might uh, also uh, kind of do the same thing for my, a fifth edition. If I run a a fifth edition zero level, I'd probably do something really similar. Uh, and only in there, I would probably, for the ability scores, just give everybody eights all the way down, uh, simply because that's your smallest, and then they can let them point by after they w were to reach zero level. But other than that, I think it's pretty, uh, a pretty clean, and uh, oh, and the XP probably would be less too, because those early level progressions go really quick in, in fifth edition. So, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hope to see you again next time.